Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, Benny Marama to practice open door policy at COP23. Public warned to be more vigilant. And tender for election material and services out. From the studios of FBC Suba, Amrita Saga. The COP23 presidency will practice an open door policy that will allow all parties to approach Fiji for advice or support. Prime Minister Varangembani Marama, in his role as incoming president of COP23, met with different groups where he outlined his vision, vision and objectives to make COP23 successful. Ritika Patap reports. Prime Minister Voringe Beni Marama has visited the different groups that are meeting to discuss negotiation processes in the lead up to COP23. For the family to be with me uh, for this COP, especially for this COP, this is our COP, Island COP, and, uh, and I need the, the assistance and uh, your continued uh, 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 assistance. Uh, with me um, in, in uh, conducting this COP, COP23. Speaking at the AOC's plenary sessions, Chief Negotiator Ambassador Nazat Shamim said their priority is to see substantial progress on the work of the Paris Agreement Implementation Guidelines. We are aware that not all agenda items are moving in the same way and we are aware that some are progressing much, much better than others. We do not want to see that a lack of progress on any one agenda item should hold back the whole package. So we would like to see progress on individual items, but an overall progress on the entire package. Ambassador Shamim says Fiji has adopted specific methodology of having dialogue to enhance ambition. It's really important that this is talking for a purpose and that it is based on the specific methodology of storytelling in order to build trust and empathy, in order that we can collectively reach a conclusion which is for the collective good. That's how we see Talanoa and that is how we hope that you will share with us this specific method of talking. It has been reiterated that the Fijian Presidency will continue to engage with all parties before and during COP23 to expedite progress for the collective good. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. And while the Prime Minister was briefed by senior officials of the United Nations Framework Convention for Climate Change on the various protocols that will need to be observed when he assumes the presidency of COP23, at a dress rehearsal at the venue of this year's event in Bonn, Germany, the PM was given a rundown of the events that will take place on November 6th when he takes over the COP presidency from Morocco. With over 20,000 participants expected at this year's COP, the role of presiding over COP23 for Fiji is crucial amidst a backdrop of increasing climate change debate and severe changes in weather patterns. Unity, we have spoken with uh, uh, G77 in China and the Oasis, and of course now with you, and we hope that uh, there will be unity uh, at uh, COP23, and of course we come with, uh, with a request for a sense of urgency. This year's COP will also be significant given that this is the first time that a small island developing state will be presiding over negotiations. Meanwhile, Beni Marama has welcomed the G77 and China's support for Fiji's presidency of COP23. At bilateral talks between Beni Marama and the chair of the G77 and China, Discussions looked at ways that both parties can work closely with each other to produce a successful COP. Today, the current chair, Igweda, expressed on behalf of members their full support towards Fiji's presidency of COP23. Benny Marama will officially assume the presidency of COP23 on November 6th in a ceremony at the World Conference Center in Bonn, Germany. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Science has proven the link between ocean health and the detrimental effects of climate change. 
Ocean's champion and Minister for Fisheries Semi Korelavisao says the COP23 will be another avenue to reiterate this message and get the consensus of the global community to take action. A strong Fijian delegation is now in Bonn, Germany to support the Prime Minister as President for the Global Climate Meeting. There is uh, ocean uh, pathways that uh, needs to be established uh, by 2020 and also the ocean uh, and uh, climate change uh, and the mitigation factors which needs to be established in 2019. The Fijian Elections Office has made it clear that all the tenders for the second round of election material procurement will be scrutinized by a duly constituted tender committee. The FEO has advertised tenders for postal voting courier services, printing of ballot papers, supply of polling station sheds and vehicles in the newspapers today. Supervisor of Elections Mohammed Sanim has reminded the suppliers and contractors to remain apolitical and must not engage in any political or campaign activity while engaged by the FEO. Sanim also clarified that it is not necessary that they will award the tender to the lowest bid. Tenders close on December the 8th. We also need to ensure that it has uh, that we have confirmation from our suppliers in terms of their ability to deliver at notice following the announcement of election date. Advertising early will allow the FEO to also verify the capacities of the supplier and where necessary we may have to relook at our current plans as well as contingencies. With November and December identified as peak months for increased criminal activities, the Fiji Police Force is urging the public to be vigilant and take proactive measures. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Sitiveni Gileho says people should make all the necessary arrangements before leaving their homes for holidays or parties. Ritika Pratap reports. The festive season is just round the corner and the students are also rounding up their academic year. This means there will be a lot of movement by the people, which normally leads to an increase in opportunistic crimes. That's why we are warning people, if they leave their homes, let their neighbours know, or get someone to come and look after the home. Or, uh, and uh, when uh, there will be a lot of parties and things like that, it's about uh, being extra vigilant, being extra careful. The stats show that it peaks in the month of November. Brigadier General City Beningiliho says the public should not take a careless approach towards their belongings. Simple actions that can be taken that people take for granted. Putting um, iPads and laptops visible in a locked car is inviting trouble. We've noticed that's the quickest way that things are stolen. Kids go by, break into the glass, they have methods to break those car windows without any noise and pick those things and they disappear. The police commissioner says the force aims to fulfill its oath to provide better services to the community and go into the new year with improved statistics. We cannot do it, like I said, if we don't have the support of the community. We cannot do it alone. We cannot just walk out there and sniff the air and know where the criminals are. We rely on information uh, that's coming from the community. Giliho admits that some of the officers do not take the information received on burglaries and aggravated robberies seriously, but they are working on changing their mindsets. He says the force is focusing on intelligence-driven operations rather than going out to the scene and just being visible. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Still to come, overloading trucks remains a concern for FRA. And cancer survivor shares her experience. Stay with us. Bula FM number 2 in seri. The Fiji Roads Authority will meet with the Land Transport Authority next week to look at ways to curb the issue of overloading. In the first six months of this year, more than 30,000 heavy good vehicles were randomly weighed in the Central Division alone. Pranita Prakash reports out of this, 282 drivers were issued traffic infringement notices for overloading in excess of 1,000 kilograms. 
Fiji Roads Authority Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says overloading quickly degrades the bridges and road surfaces. Well, vehicles are getting bigger and bigger all the time. Um, my main concern is that if, if the vehicle size continues and the actual, lo actual loading continues to increase, we'll actually have to start redesigning existing roads that aren't in bad condition because um, bridges have a limit on what they can sustain and overloading not only affects bridges but it affects the road surface. He says they are actively working with the Land Transport Authority to limit the load of the vehicles. Uh, there's a penalty scheme in place and there are way bridges um, in place already and it's been enforced. Um, I'd like to see more obviously because it's my roads that are being damaged. The public believes hefty fines may deter companies from overloading. Definitely yes. It is a must that you know it has to be increased uh, due to the road condition nowadays. It's terrible. It should be increased eh? so that they can follow the road uh, levels and all. Eh? Yeah, I think so. Uh, it has to increase and because sometimes overloading, you know, passing by, you know, in the, like Princess Road, small cars, you know, uh, no, sometimes the overloading, some materials, they fall and can damage some cars. Over $2 million has been issued in fines to various companies for overloading since January. The fixed penalty for overloading is $1,000 per turn in excess of 1,000 kg and the second course of action is to offload the trucks. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The MacArthur Street in Suva is now open to traffic. The road is now open, however, motorists are advised to drive with care as there is no line marking yet. Traffic signals have been activated and cones have also been placed to guide the traffic. The FRA says depending on the weather, line marking will be completed soon. The project was carried out under the Suva Arterial Roads Upgrade Project 1. There is still a delay in the removal of the asbestos from the old Nosori market. Minister for Employment Chone Usamate says the ministry is still working with the Nosori Town Council to ensure safe removal of non-friable asbestos. Usamate says the ministry is taking extreme care with regards to this situation as they want the removal process to meet international standards. So we are aware of areas where they, they are, there is asbestos and we will make sure working with those uh, organizations that when it is removed, it is removed in accordance with the requirements that keeps people safe. As the month of awareness on breast cancer came to an end earlier this week, FPC News caught up with survivor Irene Hamidullah, who told us about her struggle with breast cancer. Rachel Nath with the story. I look forward to my kids now, um, them growing up them graduating from school, them getting married, and hopefully seeing grandchildren too. Irene Hamidullah was no stranger to cancer as she lost her mom 30 years ago to the disease. September of 2015 was when I first felt the lumps. This was one of the nights I was just having a shower and I had just rubbed my hands through over my breast and I felt those lumps. After seeking support from a friend, Hamidullah went to the doctors where she was diagnosed, after which she went on a complete emotional roller coaster ride. Christmas and New Year was the worst in my life, or I should say the worst in my kids' life as well. January came, my husband went out for one of his trips and he decided not to come back home again. Hamidula says she was able to get through cancer with the support she received from her sisters and two children. The beginning of March was when I had my surgery done. Uh, it was successful. The good thing was I stayed in hospital just for one night. The survivor says after the surgery she remained a bitter person until she learned to forgive. Irene Hamidullah is not only a survivor, but is a warrior and a fighter in her own right. Rachel Nath, FBC News. Daylight saving will begin from tomorrow. The public is advised to move their clocks forward by an hour from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. Daylight saving will end at 3 a.m. on Sunday, January the 14th. Employment and Productivity Minister Chone Osamate earlier said the Daylight Saving Initiative is beneficial to all Fijians as it allows more daylight hours to be used for productive and recreational activities. Ahead in sports, Fiji Mbati receives support from fans.
Bula bina ka an anare sorbo kuro of neyabu wenye boka telebu. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Fijian community in Townsville, Australia visited the Vodafone Fiji Mbanti camp yesterday as the team gets ready for its second match at the Rugby League World Cup. The team was on a day off yesterday and the fans got a chance to meet and greet where they also presented their Sevu Sevu. The side had its captain's run today ahead of the clash against Wales at 9.30pm tomorrow. Defending champions Australia thumped France 52-6 at the Rugby League World Cup yesterday. Meanwhile, in another match played today, New Zealand thumbs Scotland 74 points to 6. Queensland country will be out to beat the Fiji Airways draw in the National Rugby Championship semi-final tomorrow and make it their first final appearance. International rules similar to World 7 Series will be used during the Raka 7s, which makes the event quite different from other local tournaments. Director Ropate Kauvesi says team managers have been briefed with these new rules. Rohit Deo reports. <laughs> Top local sevens teams will be vying for the Raka Sevens title later this month. We're setting a standard for, you know, we're having 15 registration uh, registered players uh, in the system. Uh, but we're allowing uh, 12 players into the tournament, the uh, Games Village. With a large number of teams taking part, organizers know that it will not be an easy tournament to manage. We're looking now at setting up the draws. This is where the fun begins the draws and getting the, the tournament rules and regulations out to the managers. Let them read about it, you know, and then come back to me with questions. A team from Kandavu is also taking part in the event and players have forked out money from their pockets for the tournament. All the boys are farmers in Kandavu, so they're just uh, selling grog and for their uh, fare from Kandavu to Shui. 64 teams will take part in the tournament in three weeks' time at Suva's ANZ Stadium. Rohit Dev, BC Sports. Nikola Matawalu set up a try for his Glasgow side against Leinster this morning to help them beat their opponents 31-21 in the Pro 14 rugby competition. Matawalu, who played on the wing, collected the ball on his own 5-meter line, broke numerous tackles and handed it over to his outside centre to dive over for a try, which could easily be a contender for the try of the season. The final field of the 2017 Melbourne Cup horse race will be finalised tonight. Speaking on FBC TV's Vodafone Sports Lounge show last night, Grants Betting Operations Manager Vijayan Kumar has advised punters to place bets sensibly. Rohit Deo with the story. Amount of more cash, you bet small and you take the excitement of the betting mm -hmm. or the racing. So I would uh, request the people to bet sensibly and bet according to your limit, what you can exactly. spend, chance to win. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's why they, they qualify from their races, you know, in the groups, and then, then they get a qualification to run in Melbourne Cup. Mm. So it's, everybody's got a high chance of winning. People are more excited here, and people, over the years people have been talking about Melbourne Cup, and Melbourne Cup is the race that stops Fiji too, mm. I, I, as I would say. More than 40 teams of four athletes each have registered for tomorrow's Suva Challenge. It will be a 10-kilometer race, which is the first of the two major build-ups for next year's Suva Marathon. More than 250 athletes are expected to take part in a race which begins at 7 a.m. from Albert Park in Suva. Uh, this event is basically part of our ongoing events that we have every year. So like we said uh, earlier that we have the Thursday fun runs, that is every week, and then we have the first Saturday of the month runs, and then we have two major events, which is the Suva Challenge in April and the one in November, and then of course we have the main event in July, the Suva Marathon. Use your disabilities to your advantage as no one can stop you achieve your dreams if you have the willpower to do so. These were the words of Minister for Local Government Parveen Bala to the participants at the National Games in Lotoka yesterday. Bala encouraged the athletes to follow the path of the physically disabled athletes who have made Fiji proud in the past. They have made Fiji proud and I'm talking about the very people with disabilities. You have made Fiji proud so many times by winning back medals from the various sporting events 
which you have competed in. In the Hyundai A-League clash of the heavyweights, Sydney FC ended Melbourne City's 100% start to the season with a clinical 1-0 win last night. Flood and showers were experienced over the eastern and interior of the larger islands. Elsewhere, afternoon showers and thunderstorms were experienced today. Looking at the west, periods of clouds and sun with a, with a shower and thunderstorm in spots. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, mostly cloudy and humid with heavy showers. And up in the north, periods of clouds and sun, temperatures in the division reached a scorching 33 degrees. At sea, easterly winds 20 to 30 knots, winds gusty at times and rough to very rough seas. The next high tide is at 7.36 tomorrow morning with low tide at 1.18 p.m. Sunrise is at 6.25. Now the outlook for tomorrow, occasional showers are expected. Isolated heavy falls and thunderstorms are also expected. Showers will be easing later tomorrow. Moderate south east swells are expected. Now looking further on to Monday, some showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Afternoon or evening showers and isolated thunderstorms are forecast as well. Recapping the main stories, Beni Marama to practice open door policy and at COP23, public warned to be more vigilant and tender for election material and services out. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM. To a poll question, this week we're asking, do you think Fiji's role in COP23 is starting to benefit other small island states? Visit our FBC website to answer. You can always send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. Or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And that was your FBC News for tonight. Until next time, good night. Mirchi FM is hot.